Welcome to today's episode of Why, Why do these, these people, people exist? exist? You may have already watched a bunch of commentary videos on pickup artists. They're very easy to poke fun at. So easy. And I do plan on doing lots of that today. I also want to delve in deeper into how their approaches vary. Alternatively, you might be living under a rock. You may have never browsed youtube.com before. And if that's the case, welcome! This is a website where you upload videos. And that's all the explanation you're going to get today. My name is Tara Mooney, and this is the first YouTube channel where every video is written and produced by a cow. She couldn't be in the video today, but if you like and subscribe, she might appear in the next one. Okay, so what are pickup artists? For the woefully uninitiated, let me quickly explain what a pickup artist is. In fact, I was Zooming my friend the other day and she did not know what these guys were. Guess not everyone spends all their time scouring the internet for people to make fun of. Pickup artists, or what is known as the seduction community, or the pickup community, is a movement, shall we say, consisting of men whose goal is to seduce and have success with women. Now, in this video, I will only be discussing men who coach men how to get women. A, because the vast majority of pickup artists are men trying to teach men how to get women. B, if I wanted to cover all genders and sexualities in this video, you would never get to leave. And C, the heterosexuals are where it's at. And by it, I mean cringe. So, Modern pickup artistry dates back to around the 1960s. Psychotherapist Albert Ellis wrote The Art of Erotic Seduction, a how to guide for men to meet women by using pickup tactics. Then there was the publication of How to Pick Up Girls by Eric Weber. Then in the 1980s, we saw a more explicit commercialization of the art. Ross Jeffries was known for his workshops, and he promoted a collection of neuro-linguistic programming techniques called Speed Seduction. And he also published How to Get the Women You Desire into bed. So if I were to give you an essential reading slash viewing list, Neil Strauss's book, The Game, Penetrating the Secret Society of Pickup Artists, and the 2007 VH1 show, The Pickup Artist, starring the infamous pickup artist who called himself Mystery. And yeah, it's the one with the hat. I'd like you to walk up. <laughs> okay, now step back. What did you feel? Um, threatened. Threatened. Yes. Right? That's the last thing I want a woman to feel. That's the last thing I want anyone in the group to feel. Now that he's that distance, it kind of went away again. The adrenaline sort of right. goes away. Well, here's the weirdest thing. Look how close I am. Oh, yeah. Because I'm over the shoulder, I don't trigger the hardwired robotic response. But if I go like this, right. it hits. But now, we're in an internet age. If you're a guy trying to get women, you're going to go online. More specifically, social media. You might look for tips on Instagram, TikTok, and of course, YouTube. There are dozens of channels, maybe even hundreds, dishing out dating tips. From regular people giving their anecdotal advice, to dating coaches, Coaches, all the way to pickup or seduction artists. I find it interesting how you can find some of the most infamous pickup artist channels like The Attractive Man by searching rather innocuous terms like how to meet women or how to talk to girls. And even in the early stages of research for this video, it didn't take long for me to get targeted ads from these guys. Now, pickup artists might not be experts on what women actually want, but they sure as hell know how to market themselves. And here's a point where I want to make a quick disclaimer. I don't want this video to be making fun of the people that seek out these services, because dating is hard. When you're a teenager, you don't want to ask your parents or your equally clueless friends for dating advice. Of course you're going to go online. And with regards to dating as an adult, it's still a minefield. Once you leave school or uni, it becomes much more difficult to meet someone. It's very easy for someone to say, pick up a new hobby, you'll meet someone through that. But that's near impossible when you have a super demanding job or you live in a rural area. So if you are someone that struggles to date and you seek out services like like this. I'm not mocking you, unless you wear this hat. Never mind, turns out I don't have a leg to stand on. The purpose of this video is to point out the absurdity of the advice that these 
artists are giving and they, and they charge, charge people, people for, for it. it find someone who actually knows what they're talking about please just save your money i also want to point out that this movement isn't just coming from nowhere the techniques might be rubbish but the idea that men and boys need a bit of guidance on how to communicate with women isn't a facade there is a unique difficulty in dating as a man now someone might argue that these anxieties are rather trivial compared to the ones of women what's that joke that they tell a man's biggest fear on a date is that a woman won't laugh at his jokes. The woman's biggest fear is that she'll get murdered. Wait, where's the joke? That's just real life. And whilst I sympathise with that argument, part of taking down the patriarchy is acknowledging how it hurts men. If you've watched my videos on Pick Me's or Classically Abbey, you'll know by now that traditional gender roles homogenise and infantilise men into these animalistic, brain-dead beasts that can only think about sex. Men are visual creatures, not emotional ones. The onus is put on men to initiate or to always want to have sex, to be dominant. Now, I'm not a guy, but I get the impression that there is this pressure for guys to always want to have sex, to always be down, because that's what we're told growing up. Remember that bullshit statistic that was like, men, men think, think of, of sex, sex every, every two, two seconds. seconds, and it's like, no, they don't. <laughs> and of course, this misconception hurts men. In fact, Ty Turner made a video on this exact topic, which I'll put in the description. It seems like in a lot of places that as a guy, you're just expected to always be DTF. And there's this peer pressure from other guys around you to always say yes, even if you're not interested. And it also comes from women. This misconception leads to women being pissed off when their boyfriends don't want to have sex and assuming that it means something is wrong with them because guys are always down. So what am I saying? Why why the tangent? Well, there is so much toxic masculinity in this community. For some of the artists, it's their core ingredient. And if you can find these guys by just searching how to talk to girls, I think we have a problem here. I think the messages that these men peddle are pretty dangerous. And I don't think they're going away anytime soon. So I want to call them out. And let's start doing that right now. Do you think this t-shirt will scare them away? I remember one of the first times I went to a club when I was 18. There was this guy who just grabbed me, went for it. No initial chat or anything. He just wanted to go straight for the pucker. And I said, I have a boyfriend. And you know what his response was? You're just saying that so I'll stop. Yeah, true story. <laughs> so in this video, I will explore a range of pickup artists, starting from the relatively harmless ones, who are just a bit cringe and goofy, you know, to warm us up. And then gradually they'll get worse and worse. A bit like those, um, I don't know what those things are called in chemistry with the acid and the alkaline and it gets darker and darker, like those thingies. So it starts off with the Bobby Rios and gradually gets more and more concentrated all the way down to Rouge. Bobby Rio is a classic example of a pickup artist who looks so uncomfortable but swears you can fake confidence. And as far as they go, he's pretty harmless. But I'm, I'm still, still gonna, gonna make, make fun, fun of him. him. Let's see how he describes his channel. My name is Bobby Rio and for the past 10 years I've been helping men become more attractive, more social, learn to flirt and communicate more effectively, develop self-confidence and discover simple techniques to meet the girl of your dreams. A simple formula to get out of the friend zone, get an ex-girlfriend back, or even score that hard to get waitress or bartender you've had your eyes on for a while. So maybe I'm already being a bit nitpicky. But if someone says they just want to be friends or break up with you, maybe just respect that? That being said, he is one of the good... Mm, he's one of the less terrible ones. He doesn't harass women on the streets, so I'm grateful for that. The bar really is low. Now, let's check out his presentation style. Chasing a girl equals losing her. Chasing a girl equals losing her. What's that squiggle? Is it a leash? Kinky. Mistake number one is sending a woman flowers or some sort of romantic gesture early on when you're just getting to know her. Which makes sense. Don't love bomb. So let's look at this next video. If you're sitting on a couch with a girl that you're not even attracted to and someone else comes and sits down on the couch forcing her to slide closer to you, you'll feel a small spark of that electricity, even if you're not physically attracted to her. <laughs> just standing really close to someone in the hope that it will turn them on. No way, they do that, don't they? Anytime a man and a woman are put close together, that electricity can be felt by both of you. But what do most people do when they feel a, a spark of electricity? They're scared of the shock. They pull their hand away, right? This is why you must have a form of lubrication there, right? 
Uh, some, so, sometimes enough alcohol does the trick. A form of lubrication? Bobby, you're coming off a bit creepy. I'm, I'm telling you this as a friend. Even though we're friends, Bobby, I would put my hand over my drink around you. Here's the thing. You are the man. Am I though? So the main focus of Bobby's lessons is to teach you how to stop being a nice guy, which is a phrase that in 2021, we really need to stop using unironically. And friend zone. Register now for the friend she falls in love with masterclass. How about you make your intentions clear from the start, and if they aren't reciprocated, don't wait around. Believe me, because this advice came from a doctor. My wife is a doctor. Alternatively, you could genuinely be her friend and find someone else. Also, as a side note, it is in fact possible to be friends with someone that you happen to be sexually attracted to. It's called self-control. Not everyone is a conquest. Not to generalize, but the guys I knew growing up who would say that they're always in the friend zone were the kind of guys that fancied every single girl they knew. And I had girlfriends like this too, but they just wouldn't call themselves nice girls. And this isn't abnormal during adolescence. Chasing a girl equals losing her. Now you might think, Hey Bobby, you don't even have women in your videos. How do you know that these tricks work? So in fairness to some pickup artists, some of them do actually feature real women in their videos. Like the next guy I'm going to discuss. His videos actually have women in. I mean, the women don't speak and they just stand there as props, but they exist. Hi guys, in this video, I'm gonna tell, talk about something very cool because in the last few years, a lot has changed for me. Oh, is your boyfriend messaging you? Let her reply and then you can take her phone. So let's send him a picture and you, you go like that with her. You take a picture with her. That's a good tip. Cross her boundaries, mug her. God, that is, that is an awkward wave. You know what that wave reminds me of? When you think someone's waving at you, so you wave back, then you realize they're waving at the person behind you, and then you just sort of go. Uh, we'd be in there, two guys, you know, prowling around, and I was always worried about how we'd look. She's like a monkey checking for lice. Hey guys, it's Rich, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about something very cool. It's outsourcing your love life to girls. Outsourcing? And a girl that could do a lot of the pickup instead of you. Interesting. But what happens if she just gets all the girls? Training her. Training her? Yeah, like I train my dog. And and then you kiss her again and then you say this is bad we shouldn't do it and all the time you keep moving forward and keep saying it's wrong by being the one that raises the objection she's likely to take the other side so basically manipulate her why respect women when you could just not respect women oh my goodness oh my goodness this guy has a video game and look that's supposed to be him Oh my goodness, this reminds me of, you know that Love Island mobile game? It's like that. But you do have to pay for it, which uh, I'd rather not. Okay, so <laughs> if this video gets 50,000 likes, which is a bit of a stretch, shows you how much I want to do this, I will make a video on Super Seducer. Then this guy caused a huge uproar because he said something along the lines of British women are all fat and ugly and terrible and whatever. And the media took the bait. This guy wanted attention and they gave him that attention. That's I, the whole point. I'm generalizing. You have zero respect for English women. You I've are got a respect for my mother. individual. I've got respect for who's many come British on here. women. And when you're there actually confronted, when you're actually confronted by smart, intelligent, beautiful women, you can't deal with them, can you? Of course I can. I'm dealing with well, everyone. Go on, then say what you want to say. I don't want to say. I want to tell you that the women are more beautiful in Russia. Right. Shock. You know, and they're very nice. Now this actually brings up something I find quite interesting. Some of these guys like to generalize whole nations of women. Remember Roosh V? He's now been banned from everything because he's terrible, which I'll get into later in this video. But just for now, I'll mention that he wrote a series of books titled Bang, Bang Iceland, Bang Ukraine, Bang Estonia, Don't Bang Latvia. And Roosh agrees with Richard that British women are just feminist blobs or something. The very idea of beauty and aesthetics is being demolished. 
to where now women are being applauded and encouraged to look like fat outer space cyborgs. But we'll get into more detail into Roosh V later on in this video. For now, let's discuss another slime ball. Who brings good old street harassment into the mix? We'll exchange numbers, and if you're cool on the phone, maybe we'll hang out. Do you... I don't give up my number. Do you text? Do I text? Not really. I'm really bad with that. Okay, we'll use WhatsApp. Here. You want me to just type that? I just don't give up my own number to It'll be okay. Here. Trust don't... Me, I, have a, <laughs> I have a boyfriend. I have enough of this. <laughs> don't be a brat, Dina. Here. Yep, if you tell this guy you're not interested multiple times and you say no like you did the first 10 times, you're a brat apparently. Instead of doing what most guys do, see beautiful woman and think about it. She's on her phone, bro. Even if you bail before you get to her, because maybe her boyfriend shows up or she jumps onto a bus. And then she jumps on the bus to escape you. Uh, Vinny is a good man. Hi. I saw you, I thought you were very pretty. That was a pretty bad approach. There was no qualification. I don't even think I gave her the compliment. Yeah, that was all over the place. Mostly because she wasn't that attractive. Well, why would you show this? You want people to buy your stuff. This does not showcase your work well. Remember, like I said, the actual words that you say when you first approach her really aren't all that important. So apparently words don't matter. I might try this next time I'm in a bar. Go up to someone and be like, F mother. But in a very charming way, of course. And they'll lap it up like a dog eating chips. Women than any pickup line ever could. What's going on with his face? So this is his most viewed video. What to do when a girl looks at you. Well, this ought to be good. I noticed that a lot of dating coaches out there recommend that you act all mysterious and aloof, like sulking in the corner of a bar somewhere. Oh, he's calling out other pickup artists. Ooh. Now, most of the time when a girl looks at you, that means she's interested in you. Now I'm scared to accidentally glance at men. When this guy's around... <laughs> Got him! I've gained the system! You'll never catch, catch me catch now, me now boys. boys! When you've caught her looking at you, look back without hesitation. Ooh, that is a cursed image. A good way to know your perfect smile is to practice every day in the mirror. Go ahead, it actually helps. Make sure to practice your smile every single day. Hi. You know, you can't just look at me like that without at least saying hi. Hi. Oh, if you thought this couldn't get any weirder. Ho oh, ho! Let's watch this one. You guys have been on a few dates and you're really starting to connect. But every time you try to escalate, she resists and pushes you away. What the hell is going on? What I'm about to tell you is pure gold. And if you say these few simple sentences, it'll get her to drop her inhibitions, start thinking about sex, and even frame you as a sex expert. What's up guys, this is Josiah Price with The Attractive Man, and this is how to get her to sleep with you fast. Josiah Price, whose mentor is Vince Kelvin. This is like the Russian dolls of pickup artists. Let's just have a quick look at this Vince Kelvin guy. How do we begin this? The big promise of betting beautiful women. Five, make that promise to you right now. In contrast to your own reality, you probably... Oh, we've got ourselves another slam poem. In contrast to your own reality, you're probably going to find it appealing, but think that it might be too good to be true. I love slam poetry. Right, let's get back to Josiah. But every time you try to escalate, she resists and pushes you away. And if she resists... That should be the end of the chapter. End of the book. Close it, put it on the shelf, walk away. And that all sex should be consensual and a mutually gratifying experience for everyone. But if you have a sentence which says, there should be consent, but... Honey, you've got a big storm coming. They don't want to feel judged or slut themselves. Slut themselves? Is slut a verb? To slut? See, even the term give it up insinuates that she's losing something by having sex with you. Man, society really screwed things up for us. For you guys, huh? First thing you're gonna wanna do is start off with bringing up a sexual topic. I usually do this by accusing her of being a naughty girl. Oh, no, 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 this is going back on. Oh wait, if I keep this on, I won't be able to read my script. <laughs> I'm gonna go into a, basically a sexual fact section. Then he goes on to mansplain her anatomy to her. Yeah, 
I mean, think about it. Women are way more sexual than men. I mean, you have a part of your body that's only this big that has 8,000 nerves on it and its only use is for pleasure. Oh, and then he mansplains slut shaming. It's just unfortunate that like society judges you so much for uh, being so sexual. I mean, like if I was asleep with like 100 girls, my friends would call me a rock star and think of the man. But if people found out that you slept with like 100 men, you know, they might call you a slut or a whore. It's just so unfair how society judges you. Trust me, she, she knows. knows. Now, I've got to be fair to the attractive man. He does actually have a video with actual women giving their advice. They're allowed to speak. And the advice they give is actually pretty good because it contradicts all of his advice. Just make sure you like come up in a nice way in front of her and not like from the back or in the side or anything that would surprise her and shock her. Like make sure she has a clear view of you. Maybe try to catch her eye before you actually approach. So this is the best piece of advice that has ever come from this channel. And it's come from an actual woman. Isn't that telling? Daytime a woman's not necessarily gonna be expecting to be approached because usually we're just going about our day-to-day -day lives. Whereas if you're in a club, if you're in a bar, if you're at a nighttime event, you are sort of more prepared and your mindset is more there to talk. Thank you for including this clip. I wish more men would take note. I guess if you're coming across too aggressively when it's a direct sort of approach, that's when we can put our defenses up. And the way that she says, don't be aggressive, which defies the whole pickup seduction ethos. Now, whilst this guy does encourage entitlement in dating, don't. I, have a, I have a boyfriend, I have enough of this. Don't be a brat, you know. But in the grand scheme of pickup artists, he's not that bad compared to others, which I'll talk about now. So this, so this guy, guy sucks. sucks. Fortunately, he's not really active now. Nevertheless, if you're going to talk about pickup artists, you've got to talk about Roosh V. And he is a very useful case study to show how seduction can sometimes lead you down this weird rabbit hole of radicalization. And when it comes to our boy Roosh, things get really ugly. Roosh V, or his real name, which I'll put on screen, he set up his website, Return of Kings, where he would publish numerous articles about how much women suck. As mentioned earlier, he also wrote a series of books which were sex travel guides. Many of his publications are now inaccessible. In 2018, Amazon removed most of his self-published books from their platform. Form. YouTube and PayPal banned him, which led to Rouge putting Return of Kings on hiatus indefinitely. But wait, there are more twists and turns in this story. In March 2019, Rouge converted to the Arminian Apostolic Church. He converted after his sister died, as he was inspired to pray for the first time. He decided to make his decision public after ingesting magic mushrooms and receiving a message during a psychedelic trip. What a story! <laughs> What a story, Mark. So, why did this guy get banned from everywhere? What did he do that was so bad? Well, let's have a look. It's worth noting that as of 2016, he stopped self-identifying as a pickup artist. But it is where he got his start and notoriety. He decided to label himself as a neo-masculinist instead, a term which describes his advocacy for traditional heteronormative roles due to biological differences between the sexes. Now let's take a look at a few Return of Kings articles. 27 attractive girls who became ugly freaks because of feminism. Most of them just got buzz cuts. The Three Purposes of Women, an article where he claims the three purposes are, I'm gonna need my glasses for this because I can feel myself getting a headache already. Reproductive sex, child rearing, and homemaking. Someone needs to set up this guy with a transformed wife. There's a great section about the dangers of going against your biology. And you might think that's a bold claim, but he does cite some sources, like himself, and articles about how suicide rates are higher in LGBT people. Rouge, I don't know if this has occurred to you already, but, but perhaps the reason suicide rates are higher in LGBT people is because of how they're treated, which a lot of the time is like, like shit. shit. So this article isn't written by Rouge himself, but I had to include it. It's by a Return of Kings writer called Kyle Trouble. And trouble is an understatement. Eight things that Eastern Europe girls have said to me that blew my mind. 
mind. This ought to be good. And setting up a date. Okay, Monday is good for you. I wrote you in my calendar. I can't wait. She also attached this picture. Now you might see this and think, oh, that's nice, she's keen. Or you might think this is an excuse to shit on American women. An American girl would say, um, so I'm pretty busy this week with my feminist dance movement studies and my job at Starbucks, but maybe I can fit you in on Tuesday at 4 p.m. But I only have one hour, then I have to get home and feed my four cats. I'll let you know on Tuesday by 3 p.m. Analysis. I thought this was the sweetest thing in the world to send me that picture. I agree, that's cute. You didn't have to make it weird, my guy. I won't lie, all girls have not been this easy to get out on a date. Many of them sing the same song about how busy they are with their lives. Yeah, those entitled little pricks. How dare they have lives? But many of the ones who have agreed to meet have said similar things about looking forward to it. They are showing eagerness and excitement to meet an interesting guy. American girls, on the other hand, would clam up and go silent. Mr. Trouble, I'm gonna give you some tough love. Maybe you're not that interesting. Or they're meeting a girl instead. Point number five. I want kids, though I'm not sure about right now, but I think it is a woman's destiny to be a mother, to nurture. Sometimes I have very vivid dreams where I am pregnant. They are wonderful and beautiful. Apparently an American girl would say, Ew, I never want kids, they're so gross. The days of women being nothing but child bearers is over. Which to me sounds very sensible, because I can imagine that growing up with parents that don't want you can mess you up a bit. Oh, but his analysis is even better than mine. This this girl was partially westernized, as shown by the not sure about now bit. Many of her friends are already married and she seemed to be the rebel of the group. However, it's been repeatedly proven that women respond to societal pressures and shaming, which Kyle seems to think is a good thing. So if all her friends start popping out babies soon enough, it's very possible she'll cave into that. Really nice, Kyle. Number six. I asked her what her hobbies were. I paint, but I'm not very good, I think. I do not have very many talents. I'm not sure what I am good at. She then proceeds to show me 20 plus amazing paintings, several of which are on display and were bought at an art show. An American girl would say, well, I really like watching the Kardashians on television. They're definitely the celebrities I'm most passionate about. But in my other spare time, I like to watch Modern Family and Sex and the City reruns. Can we just stop this bullshit that TV is bad and that if you watch TV, you're dumb? Because TV is an art form, like film, like theater, like painting. Shall we hear what his analysis is? I'm sure it'll be riveting. I'm still trying to figure out if these girls girls downplay their talents because they don't want to intimidate you. Why would a woman being good at something intimidate you, Kyle? Or because they're searching for praise. I sense that many of them are truly insecure in some matters, but are also deeply flattered by praise from men. Well, that's heartbreaking. That she needs validation from you of all people. And I won't read out all eight of these points in the article because I already feel myself getting a migraine from this. But oh wait, this is about to get much worse. In May 2014, Rouge commented on the 2014 Isla Vista shooting after he wrote a manifesto where he attributed his actions on feeling like an incel. Rouge went on to claim that his community is the solution to this sort of murder rampage and that exposing him to game may have saved lives. Rouge also said, until you give men like Roger a way to have sex, either by encouraging them to learn game, seek out a Thai wife, or engage in legalized prostitution. It's inevitable for another massacre to occur. He also stated, if Roger came to me, he would have received actionable and effective advice. I mean, initially I thought he must have been trolling, surely. But then I remember at the time there were people sympathetic to Elliot Roger. Comments along the lines of, this is what happens when you reject nice guys. Now let's talk about Roosh's infamous blog post in which he claims to satirically propose legalizing on private property. If becomes legal under my proposal. A girl will protect her body in the same manner that she protects her purse or smartphone. She will never be unchaperoned with a man she doesn't want to sleep with. After several months of advertising this law throughout the land, 
would be virtually eliminated on the first day it is applied. Now maybe it's a misfire. They tried to write some outlandish satire, like a modest proposal, and maybe he just doesn't have the Swiftian prowess to do so. Maybe we should give him the benefit of the doubt. It's not like he's ever said anything condoning before. It took four hours of foreplay and at least 30 repetitions of no rouge no until she allowed my penis to enter her vagina. No means no until it means yes. I'm gonna read this bit because it's too stupid for me to process. He also said that even if studies were to show that legalizing would reduce the number of feminists would still oppose any legislation that solved the problem in a way that didn't criminalize normal behavior and erase all responsibility that a woman has. I think feminists wouldn't want to legalize for the same reason that we don't want to legalize murder. Such a change will provide a mature jolt to American women who have been babied for too long, who are protected and coddled as if they have no agency or intellect of their own. That's interesting because earlier, Rouge compared to property theft. You know, a woman should protect her body like she protects her purse, right, Roosh? That's what you said. Why aren't you advocating for a property theft to be legalized? By your logic, these laws coddle property owners. Now, as I mentioned, he claimed that this was satire. They took one article I wrote called How to Stop. It was a satirical thought ex experiment that the way to reduce rape is to encourage women to take responsibility for what they do. And I say we should legalize rape, which of course is an absurd notion. But I've they, actually read that. Yeah, but they I've took read the it. piece. And it, I, you, you use the word satirical, and it's quite hard to find the satirical angle to it when you're actually reading it. Sorry to be that guy, but let me just quickly read you the definition of satire. The use of humour, irony, exaggeration, or ridicule to expose and criticise people's stupidity or vices, particularly in the context of contemporary politics and other topical issues. So in this article, Rouge is creating an argument which is an exaggerated proponent of basically the law and the state not supporting the victim, right? So by by basically claiming that whatever happens to a woman's body, she takes partial responsibility. So if that's the voice that you're claiming is ridiculous, whilst at the same time trying to assert that women need to take some responsibility, you're not doing a very good job at creating satire. I feel like this is a piece of satire that would actually be written by someone who is very pro-victim, and this would be, and this would actually be satirizing people that say we don't need laws to protect victims of, but Rouge isn't on that side of the debate. The point I'm trying to make is what would happen if we took this absurd notion and took it in a literal sense, well, women would just take more care of themselves like they take care of their smartphone, their purse, and their car. But what the media did, they said he is a rape advocate. So you can see from Reggie's face that he's not buying it, and I'm not either. <laughs> Again, he's claiming it's satire, but I think he's actually misunderstanding what satire is. Because whilst he's creating an exaggerated version of this argument and taking it to the logical extreme, the purpose of satire is to expose the stupidity of an argument. So if this is satire, you would be exposing the stupidity of your own argument, because you are proposing that women are at fault or victims are at fault. So either, Roosh, you're really bad at satire and you shot yourself in the foot and you just don't understand what satire is, or alternatively, this article is peddling beliefs that you genuinely hold but just taking them to a logical extreme. So for example, so for example, you might not go as far as saying that a woman must always be chaperoned or that we need to legalize. And I don't believe he was proposing that they take it that far. However, I do think, and as he claims himself, that he agrees with the argument. That's not satire, dumbass. The problem is, is that this article echoes arguments he's previously made in earnest. In your book, you talk about a, a situation where there's a woman who's half asleep and you jammed it in, I believe is the words that you used, which is so horrible. Um, but have, haven't you done that when a girl no. was half asleep? A girl that you already had sex with. You've never done, it wasn't the first time I had sex with her. No. So maybe, just maybe, he doesn't actually care about preventing he's taking his actual beliefs to a logical extreme to troll us. 
but there's still an underlying truth behind them. Perhaps it's a great excuse to express his contempt for women. Now, I'd like to show you another BBC video about pickup artists, where reporter Miles Bonner goes undercover as a client, where he learns how to approach women on the street. And one of the coaches advises him to approach someone who looks underage. So you've got to basically block a path. Oh, so block a path. Trap her. Okay. She, 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 she seems, I think, she's too young for me. Doesn't matter. Even if she's underage, it's not illegal to stop, uh, stop someone. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Try, I'll try. I'll try someone else. I just yeah, I feel I feel I feel else, uncomfortable. Yeah. In yeah. Yeah. Let me pick pick someone else for me. All right. Yeah. I know, I just, I just, I just think she's, she's, I know, she seems too young. Yes, correct. It isn't illegal to stop an underage person in the street. But don't be so dense. You know it's inappropriate. And even if the BBC took all these clips out of context and edited and chopped them in a way to make them look extra bad, these guys said these things. Even if these guys aren't committing a crime, what they're doing, at least in my opinion, is morally wrong. These guys are a symptom of a culture of entitlement. Oh, there's a woman on the phone and she clearly looks busy? I don't care because I want to speak to her. This girl looks underage and she might be scared by me approaching her. Well, fuck how she feels because I need to practice my game. They're a symptom of this problem, but they are also perpetuating it. And I don't know if I'm going to get some dumbass comments like, It's not illegal to talk to someone underage. It's not just about sex. It's about power. And I think this is why people don't understand why catcalling is wrong. I remember being catcalled as young young as age 10. Now, did the men catcalling me genuinely find me sexually attractive? Probably not. But they weren't doing it for that reason. They were doing it to get lad points, show off in front of their mates, for their own self-esteem. And that's what these guys are doing. They're using women on the street, sometimes underage girls, for their own benefit, to practice their game. It's using people. And I don't know how to solve this problem. I'm just a lady who wears a lot of cow print and is too emotionally dependent on her dog. So let's quickly talk about Neil Strauss. In 2005, Harper Collins published The Game, a deep dive into the seedy world of the seduction movement. Strauss became so engrossed in the culture that he became a part of it, even one of the leaders. Ten years later, he published The Truth, an uncomfortable book about relationships. He writes about how he struggled with sex addiction. He transforms from a serial cheater to a committed long-term partner. Now, I understand some of you might be thinking, hey, is she just saying that we should all just be monogamous? Absolutely not. Polyamory and... That's the only one I can think of right now. Non-monogamy non is, is valid. valid. My problem with pickup artists is that they promote dishonesty and to see dating as a game, literally. And that doesn't seem to lead to true connections. Now, when I say true connections, I don't mean you have to end up being in a relationship with the person and marrying them, but just not being connected to the person even during your interaction. If you don't make an effort to connect to the person, you can't even have truly gratifying sexual experiences. These guys aren't taught to seek out what the other person wants from the interaction. It just all seems very one-sided, which makes you think, what's the point? Whew, that, that was, was long. long. Thank you for watching. I haven't done a long form video since the Pick Me video essay and I've got to say I've really missed it. I wanted to make sure that this video was thoroughly researched and showed the light and shade of the topic. And it did take quite a bit of time to prepare for this. So if you want one of these every single week, that might be a bit of a stretch. But I would love to make these more regularly. Now, I have an exciting announcement. Or at least I think it's exciting. I've set up a Patreon, woo! If you can't afford to contribute to this, please don't stress at all. I know this is a really tough time for everyone, so the priority is for you to eat and have a roof over your head. And if you do have disposable income, you should be spending that on yourself first, or your doggy if you have one. So for those that might be interested, let me share why I've set up a Patreon. I want to be able to dedicate more time and create higher quality and hopefully higher volumes of content. I get a lot of comments along the lines of, 
You only have 12 videos on your channel, make more. And obviously I adore making videos and it's so much fun and I'm really passionate about it, but I do need to work to, you know, pay rent and feed Siggy. So if there's a way that I can make this a viable source of income for me, I will definitely do that because this is what I love doing. I've also been requested to cover some more risque topics, you know, more political stuff that I would love to explore and create for you. And because these topics are a bit more juicy, they're at higher risk of being demonetized by YouTube, which is a real pain after you've put hours and hours writing, filming, and editing a video just for it to be demonetized. So I thought having a Patreon would allow me to take more risks in future videos and not be confined by what's advertiser friendly and make the stuff that you actually want to see. Anyways, I'll put a link in the description. There are various tiers starting at £1 a month. And if you are even considering this, you are already being incredibly generous. So thank you. You don't owe me anything. I chose to upload to YouTube, a platform that is built on free content. So I do not expect you to just hand me money. So yeah, of course, this is completely voluntary. In return, I'll offer extra content and some exclusive posts. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking now. I've been talking for my whole oh, life. Oh. Big love to you all, dog bless. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye subscriptions. Bye bye. Bye bye subscriptions, say bye. Say thank you for watching. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're gonna go back to bed, aren't you? <laughs>